Hello, everyone. My name is Thomas Smith. I'm a member of the business development team at Net Capital. Let's give everyone about a, a minute here to get settled in. All right, looks like we have folks settling in here. We'll just give a few more moments here. All right, well... I know that we have a lot of our guests that have tuned in, so we do have a few items to go over, so I'm going to get going on that. But with that, I'd like to welcome everyone to our December Demo Day here at Net Capital. Once again, my name is Thomas Smith, and it's my pleasure to be here today with three very exciting companies that are actively raising capital on the Net Capital platform. With us today, we have Orbital Assembly, Quants Compete, and K9 Biologics. At this time, I'm going to put each of their fundraising links in the chat. Feel free to check out each of those fundraising links at your convenience. And although I use the chat feature right there, I'm gonna ask that you please use the Q&A function when submitting your questions to our panelists. But I do wanna say hello, who's ever joining us from Canada. This, uh, this is exciting. Um, and this not only helps me stay organized, but it keeps our demo day as streamlined as possible. Next, I'd like to go over our format for today. Each company will be given five to 10 minutes for their presentation, and then we'll do a few minutes for Q&A after that. And again, please use the Q&A function when submitting your questions. Now, I know we have a lot of investors that are joining us that have previously invested in one or maybe all of these companies. Um, and we also have a bunch of investors who are here to learn more. So in the interest of time, I'd like to welcome Tim Alatori, COO and CFO of Orbital Assembly. Tim, why don't you come on in here and tell everyone about what you and your team are building at Orbital. Great, yeah, thanks Thomas. Really appreciate the invitation here today and glad to be joined by Jeff and Matt as well. Uh, this is actually our second time raising capital with Net Capital. We had a very successful raise earlier this year and uh, that was the first time we opened up for investment to our supporters. And we actually sold out a million dollar raise in about a week. And uh, right now we're on track again to hit a million dollar mark and, and hopefully pass that up. So just first off, thanks to everybody who's been supporting us for the last number of years. Our previous investors are, are you know, people who are investing again, people who are considering investing with us. You know, just thank you so much. We, we really appreciate it. And I do have a couple of slides I wanted to share with you today. I'll run through those real quick. Um, if you've seen our uh, our listing, this these slides are part of our pitch deck. I've, I've whittled them down, added a couple of things just to kind of go through it for people who aren't familiar with us. So in addition to being chief operating officer, I'm also privileged to be one of the co-founders of Orbital Assembly Corporation. And we founded Orbital Assembly with the, the idea that space really needs to be for everyone. Uh, for far too long, it's been for a very select few and it's been, you know, prohibitive for people to go to space, uh, both from a cost standpoint and also from a human habitation standpoint. And we'll get into that in a second. But Orbital Assembly Corporation is a recognized leader in designing, constructing, and operating large-scale, sustained, habitable structures with gravity on orbit. And that's the key thing that differentiates us from the other companies out there who are looking to build space platforms. Uh, we believe that the future is with gravity, artificial gravity. And we're doing that on orbit around Earth, cislunar space throughout the solar system. And our mission as a company is to develop, design, construct, and manage large turnkey sustained gravity capable, pl capable platforms in space. So that's, that's what I was you know, kind of hinting at earlier. Gravity is, is kind of the key of what we're doing. So why is it so important? Why aren't people thriving in space? 
Um, you know, we've been in space now for over 50 years and less than 600 people have, have been in space and, and no one has really been up in space for more than a, a year or two. And the reason for that, I mean, there's a lot of factors, but chief among them is no gravity. Uh, the human body starts to feel the detrimental effects of gravity in about 48 hours. Um, also, construction methodology in space has been very slow. It took about 27 years to design and build the International Space Station, um, almost three decades. And then upon first you know, operation, the average uh, inhabitants of the ISS for, for quite some time were about three people on average, uh, three long-term inhabitants. So that, you know, that's just not a very sustainable uh, way to scale. And another part of it is there's a, there's a history and a tradition of having every part be unique. Uh, the, International Space Station, just there's thousands of different vendors and suppliers all pr providing a one-off piece. And so you don't get those economies of scale that you see in other industries. So Orbital Assembly, we're working to, to change that paradigm. We're building platforms that enable artificial gravity. We developed new technologies and methodologies for building on orbit very quickly and at scale. And then all of our systems are very forward feeding uh, and using duplicate parts to be able to get those economies of scale and feed that which feed forward into the next the next platform. So, you know, backing any great project, there has to be a great team. And we have this is our executive team here. Uh, just a, a whole host of very experienced individuals. We have uh, people who've worked for decades with Jet Propulsion Laboratories, who've launched uh, spacecraft to you know pretty much every planet in the solar system people with uh, business and legal experience, um, just, just a real real fantastic team and it's a privilege to work with them. So how are we doing it? Well, uh, the backbone of all of our, our work here is what we're calling our STAR platform, the Structural Trust Assembly Robot. And STAR allows us to create a variety of different trust shapes, straight, curved, rectangular, triangular, um, and it's all automated using um, a series of prefabricated trusses. So we're able to launch a, a large final volume in a very small package uh, with existing launch technologies, which is, is really key. And earlier this year, we actually built a ground demonstrator of our star technology. Uh, this is the, uh, the D star, the demonstrator star that was sitting in our Southern California facility. And uh, we, you know, tested our methodologies, ran it through its paces. We actually, over a period of months, were able to refine the process quite a bit. And then we did a demonstration for the public and the press and our investors in June this year, uh, where we actually had beaten our previous records. Uh, and when we're not dealing with gravity and we get some or more of the automated parts done, we're, we're really uh, looking forward to having uh, large structures built very rapidly in a very cost-effective way on orbit. So we've been assembling a team of partners and different organizations. Uh, these are some of the people who, who we're working with. Either uh, they've expressed interest in being our customers or we're actively working with them on developing hardware. Uh, Rogue Space Systems, they're providing some of our uh, robotic drones uh, for observation and potentially in the future also manipulating and moving uh, pieces around our construction yards. Um, uh, CR Space, if, We'll see some other renderings here. They make the Dream Chaser craft, and we're looking forward to working with them on uh, providing the escape of emergency vehicles for our, our, our larger space stations. And of course, there's some other uh, you know, familiar names in there. You'll see if there's uh, if you're familiar with space at all. Um, Arizona State University, we, we actually have uh, a really great collaboration with them. We've got some students who are working on having some student projects uh, kind of uh, building off of what we're doing and, and, and giving their students some opportunities to do some research. We've got a collaboration with Biosphere 2 and the SAM project there where they're doing a, a, a habitation simulation. So just a lot of really exciting things going on. Um, and then, you know, we're in this to make money as well. <laughs> and if you're investing, that's kind of the goal, right? Space in, in the near-term market, uh, analysts from a, a variety of different organizations are expecting commercialization in space to be a $60 billion per year industry. And based on our technologies, we're, we're conservatively estimating that we can capture about 7.2 billion of that in the first year of operation of our Pioneer class station. And I'll show you kind of the, the sequence here in a second. But uh, you know, ultimately OEC, 
Oral Assembly is a design-based construction and development company. So right now we have designs that we're patenting and you know, getting IP in the mix that we can then potentially license other companies as well. But our, our near-term roadmap, our product roadmap here is uh, the P-STAR, which is our pioneer class star platform. We'll be launching uh, towards the end of 2023. And that's gonna be building our gravity ring, which is a large rotating platform that will be generating artificial gravity at scale for the first time on our route. And I say at scale because there have been some centrifuges that have been run on ISS, but we're building you know, multi-meter diameter, large platforms. And then right on the heels of that in 2025, we're gonna start construction and, and have operation for of our first habitable station, the Pioneer class station. And then all of that technology feeds forward into the much larger Voyager class of station, which will have first operation in 2027. So, so that, that's our product roadmap. It all started this year you know, with the D-Star and our ground demonstrator, and we're working right now on the flight hardware for that P-Star, that first orbital mission in 2023. So this is you know, our timeline, kind of how it rolls out quarter by quarter. All again, you know, right now, all hands are on deck. We're sprinting towards getting this first habitable station operational in 2025 with uh, the Pioneer class station. So just running down really quickly, kind of those three stations, the gravity ring, uh, first artificial gravity commercial space station. We're gonna be hosting a variety of different payloads, commercial payloads, uh, nothing, uh, no, no humans, potentially some smaller biologicals. Pine, Pioneer class station, that's gonna be the first one, but we'll actually have people on that. And that one's gonna be able to spin up and we'll have, uh, for tourists, it's gonna have less than lunar gravity, but uh, for you know, researchers and people who've trained, uh, we anticipate going to lunar and possibly even higher gravity levels. So a lot of possibilities there for developing and testing technology headed to the Artemis program in the moon. And then final, finally, our, our flagship station, the Voyager class station, which will be a continuously operating in artificial gravity. And that'll have lunar level gravities for tourists at a large scale. So uh, with Matt, that, Matt, um, you know, I'll just end by saying that Orbital Sunday's Corporation's goal is to, to not have us be camping in a laboratory anymore in space. And uh, this is kind of a rendering of what our interiors would look like. And I'm happy to open it up for any questions. Thanks, Tim. And it's extremely exciting what you and your team at Orbital Assembly are doing. And we got in a few questions here. Um, people are intrigued by you and want to know more about your background. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Sure. Yeah, so I am a licensed architect. Uh, first got my license in California, but I've now worked in a variety of states uh, across the United States. And I hold licenses as well as a national architecture certificate with NCARB. And my background is in development. So I've designed, built, um, and work with developers on over 600 successful projects. I've, I've lost track of how many thousands of units of, of building and how many millions of square feet of, of construction, but uh, my background is in, in development. Thanks, Tim. Basically, we're taking that and doing it in space, right? And the yeah. cool thing about space <laughs> is we're creating our own real estate. You know, in real estate, you say every, it's location, 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 but well, we get to you know, build our own locations. Absolutely. Um, next question for you, Tim, is what are you most uh, proud about in terms of what you've built this year in 2022 with Orbital Assembly? I think the, the D-Star um, really is what I'm most proud about. We've done a lot of work growing our team, uh, our, our executive team. I kind of highlighted them, but we've grown out our board of directors this year and our advisory board. We've just got some stellar people. But the fact that we've moved out of just the realm of a theoretical space company, and we actually have hardware, physical hardware that we're testing and building. Um, you know, that puts us leaps and bounds above all the other space startups out there. There's a lot of companies out there with really great ideas who just haven't been able to, to translate that into hardware. So the fact that we've got physical hardware that we're, and, and it's large, you know, the, the D-Star, you really didn't get a scale of that, but it built a two meter by two meter by 78 meter long truss. You know, this yep. isn't a little desktop experiment. And I guess to go off that one, um, Tim, I see uh, the milestone for 2023. Um, can you allude to the milestones in 2022 for orbital assembly? Yeah, this coming year, we're really focused right now on getting ready for that 2023 launch. So that's you know finalizing the detailed engineering and the finite element analysis, uh, getting the fabrication lined up, uh, not only the things we're doing in-house, but all of our partners. So I had that slide up there, um, you know, propulsion, uh, environmental control systems, uh, thermal control systems, power systems, those are all things that we've got partners that are going to be 
building those components. So getting all of those designs and partnerships and contracts solidified to where we can, uh, you know, building hardware is really the goal for 2022, uh, the flight hardware. And then first part of 2023, that's when we're gonna be testing and validating everything in preparation for the, the launch at the end of the year. Awesome. And we have one uh, time for one more question here. And folks, please use the Q&A and not the chat function. Um, unfortunately, the ones who are in the chat, we're not going to be get be able to get to. Um, and Tim, looking forward into um, when you're orbiting, there we go here. Um, how will the stations be launched into space? So that's where our, our star platform comes into play. So they basically get packaged up, all the structural elements, they get launched. And then this is actually Gravity Ring and P-Star behind me. Um, they get deployed with that trust uh, fabrication technology. And then the habitation modules, those would fit on um, a, a standard rocket and then they would be, they would be assembled uh, or mounted to, to the structural elements. Awesome. Thanks, Tim. It is always a pleasure to speak with you. I know you're on your second raise with us here at Net Capital, and, um, and we just love what you're doing. So um, thank you very much. And with that, I'd like to welcome in Quants Compete founder and CEO, Matt Jones. Matt, the stage is yours. All right. Well, thank you. And, and that was a very exciting presentation. So we're going to shift gears into the world of finance now. Um, Quants Compete is a robo-advisor. That's the simplest way to put it. And our aim is to help people get out of generational poverty. Now, what that means is uh, if you are someone with uh, $10,000 or $20,000 and you go to an investment advisor, they're going to generally turn you away. They have a minimum entry. And what we've done is we've created an automated platform, something that allows us to um, serve a, a large volume of clients. And so because that large volume is in, in, in place, we can reduce the um, minimum amount to um, as, as low as you want to go uh, in principle. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to provide people with this opportunity to um, in, invest without having to know how to invest. So let me break that down a little bit because there's some moving parts to it. Um, the, the first thing is when, um, when a client comes to us, they will download our app. They'll fill out a questionnaire and that questionnaire is used to match them to automatic trading models. These are uh, algorithms that will automatically trade on the client's behalf. And so that's what I mean where the, uh, the client doesn't have to know how to trade or, or they might actually be excited about the fact that they do know something about trading, but they've realized that through maybe some of these other DIY outfits that they're not very good at it. You know, greed or fear kind of get the best of them. And so they want somebody else to do the trading for them. And that's where these algorithms come into play. So, um, so that's, a, that's the essence of what's happening is that the, um, the, the questionnaire that they fill out allows us to assess their risk tolerance and their financial goals and their time horizon. And we will then match them to an algorithm that best suits those um, results from their questionnaire. And, and so uh, once they've, uh, they've selected the, uh, the recommendation, they can customize it if they want to, or they can just select what we've recommended. Once they've done that, um, that's all they have to do. And then, then it's on us as an investment advisor to manage their account for them. Um, we encourage them to contribute monthly to their account to accelerate the growth. And, uh, and that plays a role not only for their benefit, but also to the benefit of, of Quants Compete because of our, our um, the way we make money. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So it's, it's really an exciting, um, it's an exciting idea that we have taken from concept to reality. It's, in, uh, it's going beyond MVP now. We're adding features. I've been updating the, uh, the net capital folks through the, uh, the dashboard about some of the, the progress that we've been making since we started the fundraiser. And um, I'm just, I'm genuinely excited about this because I feel like it has a real social impact and it's going to help a lot of people. Now it doesn't mean we're gonna turn away anybody with a large account, but um, it's very exciting to know that we can help those that have smaller accounts. They recognize that there's an importance to investing in their future, um, but they, uh, they, they don't have time. They, they might be focused on advancing their own career that's not financially related. They might have uh, kids in uh, um, 
you know, various uh, sports they have to tend to. And, you know, there's just, there's life, right? People have life to tend to in the present and they don't always have time to think about the future. And so Quants Compete is structured so we can focus on the future of those people. Um, so we're, we're very excited about that. Now, how do we make money? You know, that is the, uh, the big question. Um, we have a, a fee structure that is on um, the net capital listing. It's, uh, we charge $3.99 for a, a client with an account size of less than $5,000. And so we feel that's a very reasonable amount, $3.99, that's, that's a cup of coffee a month, right? And so that grants them access to one of our models. If, um, if they wanna add another model, they're more than welcome to. And, and that'll cost an upcharge of $1.99 a month. Once their account size goes beyond 5,000, they shift into um, a 0.95% uh, annualized rate on their, on their assets. So to put that in perspective, if they have a $10,000 account, we're charging them just a little under $8 a month for that single um, model. So between, uh, you know, when we try to, when we encourage them to uh, contribute monthly to their account, we're trying to accelerate them into that greater than $5,000 so we can start charging that 95 basis point fee. And, um, and of course, we're also encouraging them if they have a larger account that they consider multiple uh, models as sort of a diversification tool. And of course, when they do that, they are putting in an extra $1.99 a month. So again, it's all about volume. I mean, I like to compare it to, um, you know, Rolls Royce, uh, they, they went after the very wealthy clients when they started their company and they still do to this day. Henry Ford, on the other hand, recognized that there were masses of people out there that could benefit from an automobile. And we know that there are masses of people out there that could benefit from financial advice. They just can't afford it right now. And we aim to change that. Matt, thank you very much. And uh, you know, the thesis and, and knowing you and your company for a bit now, really democratizing that process for everyone, right? Um, and, and providing that accessibility. Uh, and with that, first question is, how, how big is the market opportunity for you? Well, I, I wrote that down. I have it on the the the, uh, the site. It's about um, a one point four trillion dollar market for the robo advising market, and that's growing because um, the silent generation and, and baby boomer generation are transferring their wealth right now to the Gen Xers, Millennials, Gen Zers, and and it looks like there's about seventy trillion dollars of assets that are transferring from those older generations to the younger, um, you know, up to about uh, twenty forty eight. And, and so it's this enormous ocean of money that's being put into the hands of people who might not feel very comfortable um, managing it themselves. And, and so, um, you know, it's, it's a very large market currently. It's projected for robo-advising to grow to, uh, from 1.4 to 2.8 trillion by 2025. And it's because these younger generation folks are, are uh, more comfortable with the idea of letting a computer manage their money. In fact, a lot of folks don't want to engage on the phone with somebody, uh, you know, an investment advisor over the phone. They would much prefer to download an app and set it and let it go. Makes sense, Matt. Thank you. Um, sure. Next question is, um, are there any trading fees with Quants Compete? Um, there could be some trading fees that are uh, on the brokerage side. So, we never have possession of client money. That is um, not what the definition of an investment advisor is per the Securities and Exchange Commission. So what we've done is we've onboarded with a brokerage. This is Interactive Brokers LLC. And so a, um, a client will have to create a brokerage account where their money lives. And then they're giving us the ability to manage that money for them. So depending on um, the type of transaction there could be, like if, it, if we're buying ETFs, for example, for a client, there is an expense ratio associated with the ETF. That's not something that we can circumvent. So that is something that gets applied as well. And so it's, it's our goal to make wise decisions based on the size of the client's account and their risk tolerance and, and their financial goals and, and try to outperform the fees that we're, uh, we're deducting as well as the fees that will um, potentially come from the brokerage firm. Thanks, Matt. Um, next question is going into the new year. What are you most excited about and what can folks be looking forward to with Quants Competes and 
this question is for the first uh, for Q1, Q2, and Q3 of next year. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I could say for about the next 90 days, we're going to be adding a lot more features to the app and bringing it past well past that MVP. And, and I'm very excited about that because what we're trying to do is lay the foundation for a high conversion ratio when users come to our site and become clients. So the, the more streamlined uh, the process, the greater potential for conversion ratio. And we have a lot of things that are, we're gonna be making announcements about uh, throughout the next uh, 90 days. And uh, I guess we're just gonna, you have to wait and see. Uh, I can't announce them just yet. But second to that, in terms of, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the front end. We've got some back end development taking place too. Um, but we're also uh, excited about um, growing the team internally. We've got a lot of contractors that are extraordinarily talented that we work with. Um, our our um, objective is to bring some of that in-house. And so that'll be a, another aspect of the uh, quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. You could see um, additions to the team. Matt, that's great. Well, we, uh, we've we enjoyed our time thus far working with you at Net Capital, And personally, I'm excited to see what the new year in Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 brings for you and your team. Um, always a pleasure. Thank you and so much. Thank you, Matt. And with that, we have last but certainly not least, I'd like to welcome in founder, president, and CEO of Canine Biologics, Jeff Sutherland. Jeff, the stage is yours. Thank you, Tom. I appreciate it. And <clears throat> Matt and Tim, I really enjoyed your presentations. Wanted to be an astronaut as a kid and can always use more information about handling my money. So I appreciate both of you uh, uh, sharing with us. Uh, Canine Biologics, I'm going to share a screen to help me get through uh, some discussion points. So if you give me just a moment here, I will share. And if everybody goes, ah, I'll know you're seeing our opening slide. <clears throat> Are you with me? We are, Jeff. Oh, there we go. Okay. So what you're seeing here, um, tell me if you're having any problems. I seem to be having a little bit of technical difficulty on my end. Jeff, on our end, we can see the, um, the first slide. It says, we help dogs with cancer. Okay, great. Um, so what you're looking at is Walter and his little baby brother in the diaper, Lincoln. Walter, this is not a stock photo. This is actually our very first client. And Walter was um, a, a great dog. He came to us with less than 90 days to live. In fact, from his initial prognosis, he had about 30 days to live. And we helped him along with some conventional treatment that he got from an oncologist. And he outlived his prognosis by about 430%. He lived for over 13 months when he had been given three months to live. Uh, the story here primarily is that he was never supposed to meet his little baby brother. So, so we we're very happy to have been part of that story. And we have several other successes like that. While we don't promote length of life because we can't, uh, given that we're nutrition and not a drug, we do heavily promote quality of life. And that's where we know that our clients tell us their dogs really do prosper is that we give them much better quality of life uh, over the time that they're, they're on our product. Um, and I'm trying to advance here. So because I am seeing some weirdness on my side, give me one moment. Isn't this always the way when you're doing a demonstration? <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, I'm going to set the sides, the slides aside and I'll just talk through our, our business here. Um, we were founded with the one premise to help dogs with cancer. And we do that through nutrition. We saw a fairly large hole in the market, if you will, um, where nutrition for dogs with cancer, that specific condition was not really being met. Uh, the big players are not in the space at all. There's only a couple of other small players. And when we have spoken to the board certified oncologists who formed the basis of our, our market, um, who then refer our product on to their clients, the dog owners, um, they don't mention anybody. They, when, before they know about us, they'd say, all we do is provide recipes for people to go home and cook because we don't believe in any of the products that are out there. And what they tell us now is that they're referring, we have about 60 board certified oncologists out of only about 400 in the country 
who are now referring our, our product uh, for their, their pet parents, if you will. And we're increasing that every week. Uh, we're very excited about our, our market share so far. We've been in a market just over a year and we feel like we're, we're, doing, we're doing very well. We've had four straight quarters of growth in net sales and we've helped dozens of dogs and we, we have the testimonials and, and people telling us that uh, they're very happy with how their dogs have thrived when they've been on the product. What also is interesting about where we are is that we are part of a $275 billion industry minimum by 2030. The pet industry in the US today is about 110 billion and it is posited by Morgan Stanley Research to be approaching between 250 and 320 billion dollars in 2030. So in the next eight years, we see tremendous growth in the industry of which we are a part, and we feel we're going to be a significant part of. You know, our growth will be pegged to, to the growth of the industry overall. Uh, I love the question that Matt got a few minutes ago about what's going on in Q1, 2, and 3 next year because we have a very exciting story. I did do a small announcement on our page, but. We have a patent pending now on a new product, which is um, a liquid diet for dogs who require tube feeding. You may have encountered this in, in humans and maybe have seen it in dogs or other animals where depending on a certain medical condition, the dog needs to be fed via a tube. Sometimes they go in through the nose, other times in through the, the side of the, the, the throat or directly into the stomach. This product space, the liquid diets for tube feeding, is about $100 million in the US. And there's only one predominant player in that part of the, the category. And we hope to, uh, to be a significant player. What makes us very different in that space is, is what is out there today is akin to the human uh, product called Ensure, which is kind of a pre-made liquid diet that they just put into a large syringe and, and put down the tube for these animals, both dogs and now cats, will be our first entree into the cat realm. Um, that, that they need that kind of nutrition. But it's kind of a haphazard, not a great fit, not a customized fit kind of diet. What we have uh, patented or are working on, have the patent pending on, is a software plus diet solution. So we are developing software that will tell practitioners, clinicians, veterinary techs, et cetera, how to mix our diet components the food and, and additional protein, additional fat sources that we will provide as part of our package, how to do that on a given animal's needs on a given day. So it's hyper-personalized nutrition for dogs who are in really critical care situations because these animals, both cats and dogs, don't need these tubes to be, you know, for tube feeding in the hospital, unless they're in fairly serious shape. They've had surgery, significant trauma, maybe they're cancer in the, in the esophagus or in, in the mouth. And so these tubes are placed to help get them fed. And, and normally those, those dogs and cats really need critical care and they need the best critical care they can receive. So our new liquid diet product is going to help meet that need. And we're very excited about that going forward. Um, another quick point I want to mention before we get into Q&A is that uh, the team that surrounds me is, is absolutely phenomenal. And I'll give you a couple of high points. Our chief marketing officer, our acting chief marketing officer, is a former director of global brand strategy at General Motors. And he brings a wealth of marketing knowledge. We have three PhD degreed veterinarians who help with uh, two who help with the formulation of our products and a third who sits on our board and is actually the CEO of a, a dog cancer company, if you will, that does genomic testing of tumors. They look at the DNA of tumors and, and determine how best to treat that animal. So that gentleman, Dr. Haworth, is sitting on our board and advising us every day almost, and he's a, a tremendous benefit. Our co-founder and chairman, uh, is a PhD in biochemistry. So we have four PhDs on, on our, our leadership team. And he has had several successful exits up to and including a $400 million exit. So, so we feel very blessed with business acumen, scientific acumen, marketing, sales, and, and just general great business guidance. So we feel very excited about this market. Um, obviously, without the passion for dogs that I and, and the rest of my team has, we wouldn't be in this space. But first and foremost, we want to help these animals. 
And that is what drives us every day. So with that, Tom, um, if that's enough of an overview, I, I'd love to open it up to questions. Absolutely. And Jeff, just from a personal standpoint, thank you for, for what you're doing. Having owned a dog my whole life, um, uh, I, I have my third one now, and it's just, uh, I, I think it's really admirable. And, and so I say that with going into uh, a repeat question, um, uh, two questions in one that I'm seeing come in. Um, people want to know a little bit more about your background and what was the impetus to finding canine biologics? And I, I love telling the story. Unfortunately, it can take me a long time, but I'll shorten it up. Um, about 11 years ago, my dog at the time, a black Labrador, um, was having severe GI stress, severe GI symptoms on uh, across a range of quote unquote, super premium pet foods. Uh, one night she got so bad, I thought I was going to lose her. And long story short, I, I found my way out of those products and into cooking for her. And I, I, I did this at home. I, I found some very trusted sources on the web and in some books, started cooking for her. And this is no word of a lie. In 24 hours, her severe symptoms cleared up. She lived for another 10 years. She was 15, passed away a few months ago and never had another, not one day of symptoms uh, that she had had uh, for the first several years that I owned her. I mean, she came to me when she was about 18 months old. And from that point until she was five when I started making food for her, um, was when she really got healthy. And that inspired me to switch my career to that point had been in IT. I was an IT consultant primarily. And I moved out of that realm into the pet food industry, started a small company called Deserving Dog, started making fresh homemade food like you now see coming from the Farmer's Dog and Nom Nom Now and some other companies, uh, home delivering that. It was all human grade, made in a restaurant kitchen, uh, I cooked it, I home delivered it, and it made tremendous changes in the lives of those pets that were on it. So I knew that there was something significant there. I was at a point where I needed funding to either grow that business or do something else. And, and I think all the entrepreneurs who are maybe listening have hit that stage at some point where it's like, okay, now what do I do? At that time, I met one of the PhD veterinarians who still works with us, uh, Dr. Haifman, who formulates our our supplement mix. And we got to talking about the implications of nutrition for dogs with cancer. And that kind of turned on a different light bulb in my brain. And I said, that's where I want to spend my personal treasure, both time, money, resources, everything I had. So I, I sold off Deserving Dog and started Canine Biologics. We went through some clinical trials. We, we reformulated we finally got things together and last year came to market. So that's my quick version of my overall story. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, next question coming in is, what are you most excited about in the interim? And I'll just say, you know, intern can be defined as um, next uh, quarter going into going into next year. What are you most excited about about canine biologics? Right. So, so continued growth in our, our main nutrition product line, which I have some examples sitting back here. Um, we are adding clinics, we are adding doctors every day. We have actually over 2,000 doctors in our network now, um, but, but that includes both the oncologists and the uh, GPs and others. But continuing to grow that market across, we're in 30 states now, we hope to be nationwide. Uh, some of the exciting uh, things in the interim, if you will, is I want to move into Canada and then over to the UK, and I just got an inquiry this morning from New Zealand. So we do hope to be international in scope, uh, both with this product, the pure cancer nutrition uh, line, if you will, and then our liquid diet line as well. So getting ready to go international, developing that liquid diet line, we're not, we won't be to market until Q2, um, are the things that are, and fundraising, are the things that are gonna take up my, uh, the lion, lion's share of my time. Great, thanks, Jeff. Um, next question is, is the liquid formula for the everyday person or is that just for hospitalized animals? Uh, it can be used at home. There are some cats and dogs who end up having to be tube fed for months or years. And it, can, it would depend on their condition. Usually that would be a physiological problem with the esophagus or, or the oral cavity. And um, so, so in some instances, uh, probably less than 5%, uh, there are those who have to do long-term tube feeding or syringe feeding. This can also be used with puppies or other animals who you can use a syringe and not really have to place 
a tube, but the, the lion's share of what we will be addressing will probably be the tube feeding. Um, so there are some times when that will be done at home by the pet owner, uh, but for most of the time, this will be applied for more critical situations in the hospital setting. Got it. Thanks, Jeff. And next question is, um, what can you allude to a little bit and what is the research behind these products um, and how long have you conducted it for? That's a great question. Uh, so we did a, a clinical trial at North Carolina State's vet school a few years ago testing out all of our components for our nutrition system for dogs with cancer. We bumped into a problem. We knew we had too much of one of the amino acids in our supplement by way of that research. We went back, we reformulated, and we did a, a, a tolerance trial here in, in where I am in Denver, Colorado, and, and passed that with flying colors. So we went, decided to go to market. The components that we use are all human grade and are all backed by significant science. We have uh, I don't know the number now, probably over 70 uh, studies and trials that are noted on our website in our research library. And every component, our food ingredients, our supplement mix ingredients, and our, our salmon oil that we use, which is a, a very, very high quality uh, product in its own right, um, are backed by significant, significant evidence and, and clinical trials. One of my planks, if you will, in my platform is that I won't let anything into our products that is not backed by significant evidence. If Aunt Mary's dog did really well on some Chinese herb, I say, great for you, Aunt Mary. But until I can see clinical evidence behind that herb, I'm not going to incorporate that into my product. Makes sense. And Jeff, is there anything else that you'd like people to know about the product before we wrap up here? Just that we, we, again, we don't promise any length of life, although we've had some very good success stories. We do know and, and we believe wholeheartedly that the quality of life of, of dogs on our nutrition, our cancer nutrition system, and those that will be on our tube feeding liquid diet um, can be greatly improved and been attested to many, many times over by their owners. Everything we do is, is human grade in our nutrition for, for cancer line. Uh, I don't say it yet about our liquid diet because it's not fully formulated, but that is my goal. Uh, and we believe also that because we're using only human grade ingredients uh, and great evidence, we have the best outcomes that can be made available for people who find themselves in this dire situation. I also, like you, Tom, have been a, a dog owner my entire life and 500,000 dogs a month develop cancer in the US and Canada alone. That's 17,000 a day. And I want to help them. I mean, you know, I, yes, we, we will make a profit. We are, we are on our trajectory to do so. But my heart and soul go out to those owners who find themselves in that situation. And I want to make our best contribution to help them. Jeff, really appreciate what you're doing. And with that, I just really want to thank everyone who tuned in today. And a special thank you to Tim from Orbital Assembly, Jeff canine biologic and matt from quants compete again each of these companies are actively raising capital on the next capital platform so if you're interested in lear learning more please visit their offering pages again jeff tim matt thank you so much it's always good to see you guys and it's been a pleasure Thanks, to work with you and thank you everyone again who tuned in we'll see you soon take care thank you tom